Hey everyone, I'm Terry G. Thanks a lot for stopping by and watching my video. If you can take a second, can you please slam that subscribe button? I'd really appreciate it. Again, thanks a lot for stopping by. What I want to talk about is one of the worst days or 48 hours I had in recovery. And if you're having a difficult time in your recovery, you might find this video helpful. I've been in sobriety for about, I don't know now, about 28 years. But at the time when this event happened, I had about six to eight months of continuous sobriety. So I thought, so I thought. Life in early sobriety was pretty good. It got, you know, I got a lot of kudos from people, you know, what a go, Terry, sober enough, finally, you know, everybody knew you had problems except you, those kind of issues, you know, people were talking about. And I felt better, you know, financially, I was getting up for work. Those kind of things improved dramatically at the start. My emotions were still a lot, uh, still out of control for lesser words. I had huge emotional difficulties in early recovery. I was up and down like a roller coaster and man, oh man, it was hard staying sober. I believed in early recovery that if I put a plug on the jug or just stop the alcohol and drugs, life would get better. I really did. And, and like I said earlier, it did get better in some areas, but as a person inside, you know, mentally and emotionally, my life didn't get a lot better. It didn't. I felt totally out of control at times when it came to my emotions. And one day, something big in my life happened that was negative. I got on the phone and I had it out with somebody. And to make for lesser words, I threatened the person over the phone. I really did. I'm not proud of that, but I did. I had nine months of continuous sobriety. And you know what happened? You know who came knocking on my door? Yeah, the OPP, the police came knocking at my door and I was charged. I had nine months of continuous sobriety. Here's me in a jail cell in Canada, Ontario with sobriety, so-called sobriety. And I felt like a total, total loser. I couldn't even do sobriety. I couldn't get silver or have a better life. All these other people were doing it except me. I was totally discouraged, bewildered, all those sort of things. And I don't know how to describe it, but I really felt that this was the bottom of all bottoms. When you're sober and you're still acting out and things aren't going great for you, it's really hard to hold on to sobriety. It really, really is. It's really hard to do that because I had this vision in my head that if I just quit drinking, if I just put a plug on the jug, things would get better, but they didn't. They got a whole lot worse. They really did in those, you know, those beginning days of recovery. So if you're experienced tough and rough times and you're saying to yourself, I'm not getting this program. I like to say to you, you probably are. If you're sober, you're more likely getting it. But what I'm trying to point out in this video is that quitting drinking is not enough. It's not. Quitting drinking is about a beginning. It's like the tip of the iceberg and underneath the water, there's thousands of feet of iceberg. And quitting drinking is like that. We have to change. I had to change myself. I had to figure out what direction I wanted to do. When I went to 12 step programs, all I did is stuck around the perimeter. You know, like I went, walked around the pool. I didn't go in for a dive. I did those sort of things. So I never started to heal from the disease of alcoholism. The disease of alcoholism is very, very real. It affects us emotionally, affects us mentally, affects us spiritually, and it affects us physically. And it really does. Alcoholism in the very nature is a mental illness. It really is. So don't fool yourself. Trying to be an island or trying to do recovery by yourself is very, very hard. And that's one thing I did. I tried to do it by myself. I went to meetings. I stayed back, like I said, and I didn't get involved and I didn't reach out for help. And I didn't have the willingness to change because I thought alcohol was my problem. It was a symptom of a greater problem, but it wasn't my whole problem. So what did I do? I had to get in there. I had to get involved and start being honest with myself, start sharing in group with, about what was going on, 
start reaching out to uh, a therapist, start getting some help. I needed a lawyer, so I needed to reach out for a lawyer, all those sort of things. But I said to myself, I'm in trouble here. If I don't change my life, I don't change the way things are, I'm not going to make it because I was going completely nuts in early recovery. It's, it's, if you have alcoholism or drug addiction, you know exactly what I'm, gonna, what I'm telling you. You know exactly what I'm saying to you, that when we quit alcohol or drugs or whatever the addiction is, we have one hell of a job in front of us. And it's a one day at a time program. And I stress to you, if you are going through hard times in recovery, you are on the right track. Reach out, get some help, go to meetings, find a sponsor, do those things, stay close to like-minded people. I didn't do any of those things. I stayed by myself and suffered. And what happened? I went crazy. I went crazy off the booze. The alcoholism does not stop just because we put down the bottle. It's progressive even when it and when we stop drinking. I developed coping mechanisms, coping skills, I should say, ways of thinking, ways of feeling, ways of coping with stress, ways of coping with my past, ways of coping with my, my hurt and my pain with alcohol. So you take that away, what happens? I have no ability to, to respond to the world around me clean and sober and I tell you I had a hell of a ride I had a hell of a ride so what I'm trying to say to you if you're experiencing this you're not loser you're not losing your mind you're not crazy you're just suffering from a case of untreated alcoholism there is hope for people like you and I because I got 29 years of sobriety one day at a time and I've never looked back I worked the programs that are out there the 12-step programs I reached out for help through therapy, through counseling, all those sort of things. And I made some major changes. I stopped hanging around the people I used to hang around. I stopped doing the things I did and I hung on and I believed what people were told me, my sponsor, things to do, how to do them, get a job, get responsible. And over time, things slowly worked out. They really did. My life ain't perfect now, but it's sure a whole lot better than it ever was. So that's all I have to say. Sobriety is not easy, but it is worth it. It's worth it big time. And if you're going through tough times, hang on and get out there and do not stay by yourself. Reach out because it will pass and you will come out of it. And the next day will be a new day. It will just be a new day. One day at a time is really, really works. And it's really great for sobriety for people like me and you, okay? So God bless you. Stay safe, stay sober. Remember, we're all in this together. We can't do it by ourselves, okay? So I hope my little story here helped you. And it's a true story that was many years ago. And I felt like giving up. I felt like jumping off the cliff sort of thing, but I would never have done that. I never give them the satisfaction. Satisf I never give them the, oh, forget it. I'm losing my, my voice now. I'm talking so long in this video, <laughs> but nevertheless. Okay, I'll see you later. My name is Terry G. This is an alcohol-free life channel where we're willing to live sober one day at a time. Stay safe, stay sober, and I'll see you next week. And thanks a lot for stopping by. Thanks.